a hundred times in his career at Sullivan and Cromwell, Foster Dulles did what Sullivan and Cromwell lawyers were hired to do. That was not a law firm like an, you assume what that phrase means. It had a specialty. They could do things like represent you in court or draw up a contract like other law firms, but that's not their specialty. Nobody hired them for that. Sullivan and Cromwell had a distinct specialty, which was forcing small countries to do what big American companies wanted them to do. And that's why every major American multinational corporation hired Sullivan and Cromwell. Whenever you had a problem in a country, they would go fix it. That was what you hired them for. Um, Foster, Dulles, and his brother did this countless times. And I just used this one example uh, at the very beginning of Foster Dulles's career, when he was still a, a young lawyer at Sullivan and Cromwell in 1917. Uh, there had been an election in Cuba. Uh, the Liberal Party, which was much more popular, had won the election, and the incumbent conservatives had lost. But the conservatives favored granting American corporations all the privileges they wanted, and the liberals favored limiting the amount of land that foreign companies could own. So some of that land could be divided up and given to poor Cuban families. That's why they won the election. So the, corporation, the American corporations told their friends in government in Cuba, don't leave office. We know you lost the election, but ignore that. Stay in power because we don't want the liberals in. The liberals then began a rebellion. The companies then went to Sullivan and Cromwell. They said, we have a tr problem in Cuba. We've hired you to solve our problems. Get rid of this rebellion. So John Foster Dulles got the case. The next morning, he got on the train in New York, and he went to Washington to see Uncle Bert. Uncle Bert was known to the rest of us as the Secretary of State, Robert Lansing. He went to see his uncle and explained the situation. The uncle said, what should we do? And young Foster said, well, I think we should send uh, some warships to Cuba to put down that rebellion. The next day, two American warships were uh, sent to Cuba. They landed 5,000 troops. They put down the liberal rebellion. The liberals figured there was no reason, no point in fighting against the U.S. military. That began a five-year occupation of Cuba, all intended to be sure Cuba was stable for American corporations. Now, of course, Foster Dulles would have left thinking, I did my job, I served the company's interests, and it all worked out. But if you look at what happened in Cuba decades later, and look what has happened to Cuba in recent decades, you'll realize it didn't all work out. Actually, Cubans got very angry about that. They couldn't do anything in 1914, or in 1917, or in the 20s and 30s and 40s, but in the 50s, Cuba finally exploded and became uh, came under the leadership of a radically anti-American regime. Why was it so radically anti-American? All you have to do is look back and see the history of American interventions there, including this one led by Foster Dulles when he was a private lawyer, and you understand why they began to feel that independent Cuba can never be achieved unless it's done in a way that reduces American influence. So you're speaking of Castro, of course. And exactly. Yeah. Castro is the long-term result of all of our interventions in Cuba. In fact, when, uh, in, in 1898, we promised to allow Cuba to become independent as soon as they got free of Spain. Then we changed our mind. Sixty years later, when Castro took over in his very first speech, he said, this time it's not going to be like 1898 when the Americans came in and took over our country. So that shows you that these interventions become a part of the consciousness of people, and uh, the inability to recognize or understand this was a, a real mental shortcoming of the Dulles brothers. Now, just so uh, I don't uh, get some nasty phone calls, uh, Sullivan and Cromwell has more to mo metamorphosed, I think that's the right word, uh, you know, decades and decades ago into a, uh, what you would call a normal Wall Street yes. Uh, uh, law firm. Yeah, They're Sullivan and Cromwell, it's still one of the biggest law firms in America, but it, as you say, it has now branched out, and uh, sometimes I think uh, it's not really necessary anymore to have a law firm to crash into other countries and make them safe for American business, because that's what our government does now. <laughs> this excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, a leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.